was so good the first time we did it again. <laughs> good evening, Let's Talk Sports fans and Spitball and Sports fans, and welcome to a special edition of Gridiron Weekly. We're honored to have from NFL, what is it, NFL Network on Sirius or NFL.com on Sirius and all the other stuff he does. We're honored to have Zig Fracasio on our show tonight, and hopefully it's going to be a, a very entertaining night, and hope you'll get some knowledge out of it. All right, we're, we're all big, huge fans of yours, but we have fans that, you know, might not know you, might not know what you do. So just take a minute or two and just tell us, you know, what you do and how you got started and all that fun stuff. It's all about you. Oh, boy. That ought to take about five minutes. No, uh, <laughs> well, first of all, guys, it's great being on with you, with Bill, the mighty Quinn, of course, my old buddy, Johnny Restino from our Niagara Falls days. Um, and by the way, it is Sirius XM NFL, NFL. radio. Yes. So, yeah. but uh, luckily, gosh, you're 21 now of our channel, and it's been rather amazing. Um, I didn't want to work for a living in all seriousness. So luckily I guess I had the uh, gift of gab growing up plus the fact the uh, great sports knowledge and uh, actually was lucky to get in the audio visual program at our old high school, Niagara Catholic, and uh, wound up doing some sports casts there like two or three days a week. Uh, then went on to N triple C Niagara community college, got my, uh, associate's degree there and just radio was something i wanted to do for the rest of my life wound up moving out to las vegas ultimately got my first gig out there at of all places a country music station but learned everything and it was absolutely great did scoreboard shows because we were in play-by-play -play during that time and then uh fast forward to around 1992 uh, and a friend of mine asked me if i wanted to fill in on his nationally syndicated talk show that originated from Bally's Hotel and Casino. And I'm like, yeah, why not? So uh, really since the end of 1992, for the better part of the last 32 plus years, I've been either in national, uh, local, or uh, syndicated or satellite sports talk radio and loved every minute of it. That's awesome. That really is awesome. So we wanted you to have you on later in the season. We wanted to see, let the season play along. You know, we thought about earlier on, but really – they always, always say in the NFL, give it about 25%. Now we have 17 games, so the percentage is off a little bit. But we've had four weeks. What are your thoughts? What are your impressions so far in the NFL? Well, I think the actual regular season starts this week, doesn't it? Because I, <laughs> I've always considered, guys, I don't know about you, but yeah. and he, and you even heard Belichick say this a, a time or two in the past. Yeah, it, you have the three preseason games, and then you got the start of the regular season, but if, as we've seen through the first three to four weeks, the play has been pretty ragged. And we've already seen a boatload of injuries, quarterback situations around the league. So to me now, hopefully they've got the kinks linked out. And, you know, actually now it'll be uh, the regular season as we know it. But in some seriousness here, uh, it, it's clear Kansas City may not be, you know, the, uh, the shiny toy that they once were but they somehow continue to win games. And I think that's because of perseverance, a true next man up. They've already had some injuries, yet they persevere. Mahomes hasn't even really played that well, but that defense has been absolutely outstanding. Uh, it's clear early on, sorry to say this, JR, but three games in, uh, looks as though Daniels is a little ahead of Caleb at this point. This kid's got a chance, I think, to be pretty darn special. Um AFC, I, I thought the North would be kind of bunched up and uh, maybe all four teams get in. I'm not so sure about that. Now I've been a little uh, surprised actually how good Justin Fields has been uh, with the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. So it'll be interesting to see there. Uh, Miami already looks like they're in a, a heap of trouble already at one and three and already now have gone through. Gosh, they are already on their fourth quarterback mm -hmm. of the season in Snoop Huntley of all people. So uh, those are some of the observations I have. Uh, 49ers are going through it right now with a ton of injuries. Minnesota, you want to talk about a reclamation project. Sam Bradford looks like the third overall pick of the draft. And that, to me, guys, is the mark of superb coaching. Kevin O'Connell might be my uh, early pick for coach of the year. The guy gets it. The guys love playing for him. And for a guy who had all the troubles that he had, to make Sam Darnold look like a competent quarterback, that says a lot. So that's what I'm thinking through the first quarter of the season. Awesome. Go ahead, uh, John. You got anything? Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, the rookie quarterback, that was a question. I was going to ask, and, of course, 
I know if it's on my end what it's going to be because the Bears can't do it, Zig. I don't know why they can't do it. Do you have any idea why the Bears cannot develop a quarterback? <laughs> um, although McMahon, give give him his marks. McMahon, yeah, good, but let's face it, that defense, you know, the aura, the you know, Da Bears and Walter Payton and everything. Uh, although Johnny, he's only four games in. Yeah, and I've started to see some incremental progress with him. I, I think with. <laughs> What he's got to learn to do is, first of all, you can't keep backing up. Like, this isn't USC anymore where you can try to dodge the pass rush and use your athletic ability to get around it. These guys are just way too quick. So he's got to develop that. He he doesn't have to make the hero throws like he did at USC. And another thing is the speed of the game. My colleague at Sirius XM NFL Radio and longtime NFL executive Pat Kerwin would always say, well, there's a difference between USC Open and NFL Open. And so from that standpoint, he has to be a lot quicker. This is going to come in time. I, I thought he didn't play that bad the last two games. No. So well, we'll give him a little bit of a pass. And hopefully for your sake, he does develop into the quarterback. A lot of people think he'll be. So just for your well, situational awareness, you got Bill, who's a Steeler fan. Obviously, you know, Johnny's a Bears fan. And I grew up in Washington, D.C. area. So I'm a huge commanders, whatever they want to call themselves today, mm -hmm. fan. Been, you know, been, I was there during the glory days. Family's had season tickets since the 60s. So I still go to one game, try to get to one game a year. But just for your situation awareness. So what do you think about Jaden Daniels? Oh, I happen to like him quite a bit. Um, I had Mike Denbrock on the show over the summer. He, of course, is the Notre Dame offensive coordinator. But the last couple of years, he was at LSU. So we had a chance to work with Jaden. He also worked with... Of course, they're terrific receivers there in Malik Neighbors and uh, Brian Thomas Jr. And he said, Zig, this guy was the last, the first in, the last out, always willing to take coaching, knew he had to work on his footwork after he transferred from ASU. And, you know, I, I think uh, the, the defensive back from the Bengals, and I even asked him about it after the game. I had him on the show, Camp Taylor Britt. I go, do you, anything different about what you said from, Last week when you called it a college offense, he says, hey, look, I played quarterback. I still kind of stick by my off my comment on that, but whatever Kingsbury's doing, if it's college offense or not, it seems to be working big time. So he makes the safe, good throws. The element of scrambling uh, helps him a lot. And he hasn't actually gotten McLaurin, I think, uh, totally yeah. confident with him yet. And when you do that, then he'll really take off. But I think Kingsbury's done a terrific job managing Jaden to this point. Yeah. He seems very calm. He, even yeah. when he throws in there, his calmness is really reassuring. All right, Billy, you're up. Yeah, well, I mean, Jaden Daniels, I'll tell you what, I think he sits, he fits good in this uh, Cliff Kingsbury's offense. But I'll tell you what, I mean, he is the guy – he finds open receivers too. I will say yep. that. And I know um, – I was listening to Pat Kerwin today. They had Dan Quinn on there. And he said, you know, to your point, Zig, he said he gets in there before uh, some of uh, some of our coaches get in yep. in the mornings. And Pat Kerwin yep. said, well, what's that say about your coaching staff there, Dan? <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I mean, very impressed with this guy. Saw him at LSU, kind of looked at him, kind of studied him, and I knew he was going to be big. I knew he was going to be um, something special. And as, as far as um, – John, as far as your quarterback, I mean, I'm with I'm with Zig on that. Give him a little bit of time here. I think uh, with some of the issues they've had on the offensive line, I think that there's you know he's he's got a lot of guys in his face a lot of times. Billy, um, what about his body language? His body language look, looks like he's not having fun. Where Daniels is smiling, getting up, laughing, well, I, and yeah, well, he's winning. Daniels too. I mean, well, with the Bears, they they certainly. You know, they may have drafted a punter in the fourth round and seemed pretty interesting when you need offensive line help. I don't think they did as much as they thought. This is just my opinion. Sure, they got them the, the nice, you know, uh, things, toys, yeah. but they didn't do the stuff I think they needed to do to really help them. Well, it's okay to have Keenan Allen, to have this guy and that guy, but when you can't, you know, get it out there, I just think they didn't do it. To, Zig, to Zig's point, you know, it is a lot faster. Things are moving a lot faster than what they did at USC. I, I will say this, too. 
defenders move a lot faster as well. And That's it right. seems like he wants to he wants to run and he, he can't scramble like he did at USC because guess what? These defenders are pretty fast in this league, you know? So, I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, that's something he's running into as well. Yeah. And so, I think not, not to interrupt you guys, but I, I think it's kind of dangerous anymore to say the, and I know social media perpetuates a lot of this, the 24 seven cycle of the NFL and all that, but, you know, not every start can be Dan Marino of 83 against the Bills where he came on and threw like for 300 yards in his first game, which, by the way, the Bills ended a 17-game losing streak at the Orange Bowl way back when. But as I digress, my point being, John Elway, hell, he lined up under guard his very first snap against the Steelers. Oh, what a bust he would have been in this day and age. I think he turned out all right. So the thing is, you've got to allow patience for this. I know... Because the salary cap is there, I know the twenty four seven cycle of this, and the you could be worse to first want the next year. All of that is all well and dandy, but if you truly want a chance to, you know, have a successful program, allow a little bit of patience. I love what I see from Daniels. I'm encouraged with Caleb, and I even liked, even though he struggled Sunday. I thought Bo Nix showed a little bit of resolve there with yeah. the Broncos and some yeah. hostile elements against the Jets. So you just got to let these kids, you know, what was it? Let Russ cook with Russell Wilson. Let these kids cook for a little bit, for goodness mm -hmm. sakes. What do you think, Zig, is the, the maturation process of a quarterback? John, what was the quote from uh, the famous Raiders coach who said, what does he say, 24 games give them before yeah. you evaluate them? Yeah, John what do you think the, Yeah, John, what do you think the maturation is, Zig? That's about right. I, I mean – you know, although, in, like I said, in hot take media, it may be two starts. But uh, right. I, actually, I think it was a big tuna that said that. Didn't he say that? I don't. I don't it might. It might have been Parcells. I think Parcells said it. He said, "You pretty much know after twenty four starts what you have a quarterback." Yeah, I might. Right. I, I don't know if I go that many. I would go probably at least twelve to sixteen, maybe upwards of twenty to see what you actually have at that particular point. So. You know, again, I mean, we saw what Darnold's doing with uh, Minnesota. I, and I also think the fact that uh, he spent some time with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco uh -huh. was very beneficial. But look what Malik Willis has done in Green Bay. You know, I mean, he, you know, he's not the second coming of Montana here, but LaFleur managed the system well there, played to the kids' strengths. They ran the ball well. Obviously, Jordan loves back now, but the point being is, Sometimes it's coaching. Sometimes these coaches don't adapt to what they have. Coach to your talent. Again, I'm no, I'm no coach myself, but I try to play one on radio. But, <laughs> but my, my line would be, if you have a talent, if he's better off as a mobile quarterback throwing on the run, you don't have him in the pocket. You utilize plays to go to his strengths. And I think a lot of these coaches, or some of them at least, have that problem thinking their systems the cure all end all. All right, back to you, Billy. Question. Go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to get I wanted to pick your brain, Zig, on the dynamic kickoff. Um mm. I know that yeah, I mean it's, <laughs> not, yeah. I, I, I love mean, the dynamic touchback, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I I mean I you know just looking at it, one one way that I would uh try and fix it was uh, instead of kicking from your own 35-yard line, I'd move it back. I'd move it back to the 25. I think that, that would pretty Amen, much – Amen, brother. Yeah, you know, I think that would pretty much solve everything. Um, you know, I think that uh, kickers are still trying to – they're struggling to get it in the landing zone. Um, I think, as we saw last night with the um, – with that kick last night uh, with the Titans, you know, fair catch it. You know, there's just – True. They're still trying to understand the rules, but – but I guess uh, what's your I mean what's your take on it? Now, obviously they want to get returns up, returns are way down, and they thought that this would be a way to do it, and uh, it's kind of backfired. But like I said, I think you move it ten yards back to the twenty-five, and I think that solves a lot of your problems. But I let's would say think, you. yeah, I I would I would be amenable to that idea. I think even uh, the commissioner talked about that today on one of the shows that maybe he thought. Uh, then if they kept the kickoff as is what at the 35, but then you'd have the touchback at the 35. I think something to that effect, but 
I'm I'm with Bill in that suggestion there because you gotta you gotta look at this. I mean, anymore, uh, you see what Aubrey's done in Dallas. You cool. saw what uh, Koo yeah. did for Atlanta Sunday, fifty-eight yarder. Hell, that right. thing would have been good from about seventy. These guys have leg strength <laughs> like you wouldn't believe anymore. So I think the challenge. Hey, they moved the extra point back, made that yeah. a little more challenging. Why not do that to the kickoff? I'm on board with Bill's idea. And here, here's a problem. Bill and I and John, we do shows, multiple shows on NCAA as well as well as NFL. The analytics. Why can't they just kick the friggin' field goal? You look at tech. Oh my Friday, gosh! Why yeah. can't they kick the freaking field? Just take the free points. Yeah, I mean, anything you're fifty in at NCAA and, and NFL is, is money. It's free. Yeah, why, I, I, I don't do understand. It? It's almost like old man's football. We're whining about take. You know, take the <laughs> points. I mean, mm-hmm. and and then like last night's game. Yeah. Why is Seattle going for two when right. it was an eight point margin? You just kicked the extra point. It's seven. I right. I still to this time I think these guys. Uh, tend to overthink. They're like this new wave of analytic driven coaches and everything like that. It bugs the living blank out of me to be perfect. Especially honest. when you're on the road, take right. the three points on the road. Why wouldn't you? I don't get it. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's where analytics I think is ruining, you know, I it, like it, aggression, but when it yeah. gets overkill, it's ridiculous. Yeah. All right. Uh, John to you question for you, buddy. Go ahead. Yeah. My question Zig, is about coaches, head coaches. Who's, the first one to get fired, or who's on the hot seat after four weeks? Oh boy, Jr's already got the blowtorch going. Jeez, <laughs> oh, oh man, Jr blowtorch over here. Yeah. Uh, boy, that's a good question. Um, Sirianni, maybe. I think he you know is. that's not a that that one's interesting because it makes you wonder: Does he really coach the team? I mean, they looked. Yeah woefully unprepared again against Tampa. Now, maybe that's a bad matchup because they got their doors blown off in the wild card game. Yeah. So, um, you know, they, and they changed coordinators. So you thought that might have helped. Uh, Western New York guy, too, by the way, Jamestown. And uh, another Western New York guy could be on the hot chair with Dayball, with the Giants. Yeah. I mean, they got off to, you know, a slow start here. It didn't play all that bad the other night against the Cowboys. Daniel Jones. Wasn't that bad? I was at the game. The fact is, he had, I think, a stretch of like 12 or 13 straight completions. He can make the short, the intermediate throws. The problem with him is he can't make the longer throws for whatever reason. So uh, even with the new receiver neighbors who I like quite a bit. So uh, those are a couple guys that uh, would maybe come to mind uh, immediately about guys being on the hot chair, so to speak. So while we're on coaching, Belichick, or Vrabel, who's getting the first job next year? Ooh, good question. Um, well, if Bill wants it, you know, obviously he's going to be highly in demand. Just mentioned the Giants a minute ago. Of course, he's got a long affinity for that organization where he won. Yeah, started two, off. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. two Super Bowls as a defensive coordinator. Uh, of course, you know, if McCarthy doesn't get out of his own way in Dallas, although I, I don't know if he'd want to, you know, join the – uh the, the circus that's the Jones family down there. So I don't know if he wants any part of that. I've suggested, you know, and I don't know if this is going to happen because I think the Bills do like McDermott, but can you imagine Belichick oh. coming back to the AFC East and having a yeah. franchise quarterback and a reasonably good defense? Yeah. That could be something. So I would say Belichick over Vrabel because I think Mike's been a little obscured in Cleveland this year because the Browns are off to a kind of a, a slow start and things are, you know, getting yeah. kind of bad there. Now, what was it? Four offensive linemen are out, yeah. So, yeah. you know, and Deshaun Watson's already had his fair share of troubles. Although it looks as though Chubb might be coming back within a few weeks or at least yeah. opening that window. So I, I would say Belichick over Vrabel. Awesome. Could you, could you see Vrabel uh, going to Philly if um, Sirianni doesn't survive? That's a possibility. Or does Belichick go there? I think he's one of those guys that he, he could pick his own job. But uh, no, I'm it, sorry. I meant you see Belichick going to Philly if uh, it, Syria. Yeah, it could happen. I mean, yeah. let's not forget that, you know, they, they, they've drafted well. You got a GM that's, uh, you know, made a lot of aggressive moves. And you've mm-hmm. been, you got a team that was in the Super Bowl not even two years ago. But here's the thing, guys. If you're Belichick, or you're, you're a team that's wanting to hire Belichick. You know, Bill Belichick, the coach, maybe he's the greatest of all time. 
X's and O's, yep. preparation, the whole nine yards, few if ever were better. Bill Belichick, the <laughs> draft guy, Woo. Eh, not, so much. not so good. So, yeah, yeah. you know, you would have to make that clear. Hey, we love you. We think you're the greatest X, X and O guy of all time. But you and you could have a little bit of input maybe with the draft, but we run the draft. If that's the case, then I think he would fit anywhere. Yeah, Tom Brady was his deodorant for years. Eh. It, it really was. He was his drafting was terrible. Speaking about quarterbacks, we were talking about this earlier. So the quarterbacks that are getting contracts likely, well, most of them so far have no Super Bowls whatsoever. Right. And the way the price is going, it's going to go up and up. And it, it looks like you know if if in Houston C.J. Stroud stays on the same trajectory, his might start with a seven. Is the NFL at all looking toward what the NBA did with the Larry Bird rule? You know, somehow deflect a portion of that, not account against the cap. Because I mean, if you have Say you have a quarterback who's $60 million, like Dak, 34 in C.D. Lamb. Micah's going to get 34. I mean, it's it's unsustainable, right, For, from a cap perspective. Three well, players, you're up to $140 million, you know, possibly. When you, you think along my lines, brother, because I've been proposing this for about three years now to make the quarterback position cap exempt. If these owners can't control themselves and they put such a yeah. premium on there, then – you yeah. mixed in that observation well about the Larry Bird exception, which basically lets you be over the cap because if you're signing your own free agents. Or, and I brought this up with the uh, former NFL tight end Dwayne Allen, who's uh, still with the NFL PA, then do you also consider the other extreme and you cap what you can pay by a position? In other words, you can't pay, I don't know, 15% of your salary cap to one position aka the quarterback and he's like zig we worked too hard for that and all this i go well then something's got to be done about the quarterback thing yeah. so to me make it capped exempt this way you could pay more guys and oh by the way i don't know if y'all are bring back the middle class of the nfl but it seems like anymore we're getting guys now that are either two or three guys maybe get the real big bank then you've got the rookies slotted in on their deals what does that leave the other guys? They're almost like the one year, three million, four million dollar year prove it type deals. That's where I think you've got to have a little bit of a uh, how we would say a middle class, if you will, in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. great point. Go ahead, he, go. Well, these guys know I'm I've always been a little bit of a skeptic when it comes to overpaying the quarterback. And right you know, so. yeah. yeah, and and I just don't see, you know, when you have a, a situation when you're you're paying 20. 25, even sometimes 30% with some of these deals uh, go into one position. I just, you know, it just, case in point, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. say no more. I mean, and that's that's my case in point on that one. But You know, and yeah, guy who's now lost you know, on a team that's lost nine of their last 10, you know, and you're paying him. And the owners already said, we are expecting to win. I was clear in that directive. And here they are. They lost nine of their last ten. And I do like I do like the ownership though. Lawrence has admitted he struggled. Uh, Doug Peterson continues to have his back, and he, well, you know, people are saying on social media that, well, do we need to have that conversation with Trevor Lawrence? I go, you just paid the freaking guy. You're not having the only conversation you're having with him is, hey, buddy, can I get you a beverage to go to the sideline? You know, or hey, can I help you read that route a little bit better? That's the only conversation you're having with the Trevor Lawrence. These these owners yeah. just don't get it. Or yeah. or what you can do to counter that. And my old co uh, colleague and great friend Alex Marvez used to bring this up on a repeated basis: draft quarterbacks every year. This yeah. way, they could all get assimilated into the system. Yeah. And then, if you think you're not going to be able to pay or want to pay a quarterback fifty million a year, then you've got jr or bill or the quinn you know to overtake the job because you know the system already yeah. so mm. yes, this is what speak, it is and speak about that the cap the cap itself is it, the way the, the league is designed now you have to hit on a first round quarterback who's very good or else it's very hard right. to they wanted parity but if you look back every every single super bowl that's been played it's been a named quarterback for, with the exception of a few you know philly you know but it's all been a named quarterback since the league began and i think the all the salary cap did was force you if you miss on a quarterback you're done for 10 years well you know that I mean? and also too if you've noticed some of these teams been able to like seattle russell wilson yeah. 
You know, they got to a Super Bowl on his rookie contract. Mm -hmm. you're, you're hoping you can kind of, you know, right. hit the proverbial lightning in the bottle, so to right. speak. So but that's a thing, thing too, that you had to hope for. So, you know, there's going to be some guys coming up here before long. Dak came up not too long ago. So, you know, you're going to have not to pay them. Well, true. But again, here's the adage, though. If he, if Jerry didn't pay him, somebody was somebody going to pay was, him, you know, but he still has. Right. I mean, he still has. Obviously, he was going to be a UFA. But I, I really think that it didn't matter the timing for me. If you're going to pay him, they were going to pay him. Yeah. Right. It, for me, I would, and, and it, you really have to. Let, they're they're not very good, <laughs> which is the problem. They need a wide out bad. They need more more dynamic players on offense. So I, I wouldn't have paid him, but that's just me. Well, that's Jerry. You know, they're trying to you know keep keep the glory going there in Dallas. Never mind that they you know they don't have much of a ground game, and now they're going to be without uh, two of their key defenders for a period of time with Parsons and Lawrence. Yeah. So and they're playing Bills Steelers Sunday night in Pittsburgh. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right. Which I still think the Cowboys. Love that. <laughs> I really do. All right, who's John? You next with the question? Yeah. Go ahead. yeah. Um, you know, we. I, I was going to say something about the fifth year option, but I'm going to I'm going to get off of this because I I, I you know, can read it on social media because I go crazy about the fifth year option. The NFL trade deadline is coming up. It's uh, well, it's a little bit earlier this year. Later. 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 Week later. Yeah. What do you think about that? Say any difference, or does that make a difference? You and do you think it'll be really active? I don't know. We, it seemed like when uh, we were adolescents, there wasn't a whole lot of trade deadline yeah. deals. But then within the last, I don't know, three to five years, we would see a lot. And I guess now there was a report that uh, came out today about Devontae Adams. You know, yeah. apparently now uh, uh, wanting out of Vegas. Uh, I guess what Antonio Pierce liked the social media post about, hey, is Devontae Adams done to that effect in Vegas? So. Uh, I don't see a rematch in Green Bay. The obvious destination you would think is the Jets because of his closeness with Aaron Rodgers. But then what do you do with Garrett Wilson? Because right. he's, to me, he's one of the top five to seven receivers in the NFL. So you disrupt that chemistry. Uh, well, go ahead, Bill. Well, I was just going to say, what about the Rams? I mean, they you know, they need a receiver. Puka Nakua is hurt. Cops yeah. hurt. What about even uh, reuniting with Carr in New Orleans? Yeah, that's also been likened, you know. Um, I mean, Shahid's a nice receiver, but he's not a number one. So uh, those are possibilities. And then he's the definitely thing, going to Washington. Nah, <laughs> well, that, there, there's another one that's been yeah. likened too. But then yeah. here's the thing. What do you give up? I mean, the guy's still ultra productive, but you're still having a factor in, you know. The Raiders already came out. They already and, said all they want is a second. I can't believe they said that. They came out and said all we want is a second. It's been on the well, air Quinn, yeah. they might not even get that because really? what, you have, what you have to look at here, I mean, as good as, good as he's been, this is year, what's it, year 11, year 12 in the league. Now you've years. got an injury to deal with Calf, yeah. and you still have the contract. So uh, you, you might be able to get, if you're really lucky, maybe a team does pay it too. I'm thinking more mid, you know, maybe a, a, a third and a fifth, fourth and a sixth, something like that to get a, a Devontae Adams. But this is going to be interesting to see where he uh, where he may wind up. Well, he's a rental, right? Essentially, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Essentially. All right, Billy, you're up. Pick a question, baby. Okay, so I had a – these number of injuries, I don't know. It, it seems like there's a lot of them this year. Does, does this concern you? I mean, um, I, I don't know. There's some big ones. I mean, obviously, CMC in San Francisco – the toll to a thing in Miami. I mean, right. uh, AJ Brown, you know, you field you know. an all-star team, right? Yeah. 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 And, and what, what is with the, the Achilles is now the new ACL. So what, I mean, is that honestly do, I mean, I, I'm in the medical field for the army. Is it honestly due Thank to the you. turf the service? It, is it due to the turf you think, or what do you think it is? Uh, gosh, you could go, go a half hour on this topic. Uh, <laughs> and I'm not trying to be funny here I, yeah. I, because yeah. the idea is if you don't play these guys in preseason, then they're going to be ready to go for the regular season. But then you're damned if you do because then they get hurt because there's no ramp-up time for them. In other words, you know, to play football, again, you would think there, there has to be an element of contact to at least build up your – stamina your system so 
there's the there's that argument. Well, if they played in the preseason, maybe they would avoid injury. But then if you play them in the preseason and they blow an Achilles, then the manager or the coach and GM look like idiots. So I think there's a combination of things. I think is uh, the mighty Quinn brought up. It could be uh, could be the fields. You know, uh, I, I still cringe when I see RG three oh, in the no. slop there in that wild card game with a with a bad knee that still makes me wince after all these years and they I think they gutted that poor kid's career so I digress so but I do think fields are part of it I think you know sometimes you got to wonder you know these shoes and everything they wear all they all look great and everything like that you know could it be the shoes could it be that the the proper foot supports not there uh, with concussions, I mean, I think they've mm. tried to make a lot of inroads there. I think the guardian caps are a hell of an idea, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, it could also be the accumulate uh, the accumulative effects of a 17 game season. You know, having to play uh, like the Jets did. What was it? Three games in 11 days. Thanks. Sooner yeah. or later, you know that that's going to take a toll on you. This. I was never a big fan of the weekly Thursday night football game. Maybe once in a while is cool like it used to be, yeah. but every week I think that is a major ask. So if you're asking me, guys, I think it's just a, 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 a an accumulation of a bunch of things here. Is there an easy answer for it? I don't know. If we want to extend the season now to 18 games that they're talking. I still think it's going to be 20 within 10 years, if you ask me. Yeah. Then Oversaturation. You, may, you might you might actually have to make this a year-round sport because then you'd have to easily have extra buys. And to me, you'd also oh. have to increase your roster sizes. You know, maybe have 50, 50, was it 53-man roster? I think you dress what 48. You're gonna have to increase the game day rosters at some point, too. So the long answer to your question, I think, is just a bunch of factors to it. So, so your buddy Pat Kerwin, he always contends that why in the world are you paying those five players to do nothing? I mean, it, it's absurd. It, we cut down on the amount of time you needed on specials, right? If you had those extra bodies, why are they paying five people to do nothing? Sit there in street clothes. I don't get it. Well, you got to have somebody at the ready, don't you? Well, yeah, for the next week, yeah. I, I understand what Pat's saying, but. At the same time, then you then you what you don't have a, a practice squad. I love Pat. That I wouldn't yeah. agree with but, that I mean, thing for saying. You still maintain that sixteen on the squad, right? And you have the fifty eight of the or the fifty three of the right. active. Yeah. So you're still what? That's you're almost seventy right now. Right. Yeah. So essentially, if if those six, 17, 16 or seventeen are still separate, I, I think they should add more. It, it would just be less for your stars to be on those special teams. If you had a dedicated special team team. It'd That's be totally a good point. If you're not using first and second team, you figure 44 will get you first and second team, right? Get an additional couple players, you know, that'll be your specials, and you won't need to, you know, overuse those guys. Sort of right. like a sort of like a college does, you know, right? Like the Texas A&M, the famous 12, you know, they run down on the kickoffs and all yes. that. Nonsense, oh yeah, you know. But yeah. Yeah, just to follow up to your question on injury, why in the hell is Harbaugh playing Herbert? Huh? He can't move. I, he can't do anything. No, he he can't. He he. Re well, not that he's. You know, not that he's Carl Lewis back there to begin with. So, yeah. you know, see, so he's he's not Mr. Agility to begin with. I honestly don't know. And that was another thing that made me cringe when he had to leave the game against Pittsburgh. Oh, you could yeah. tell he was clearly favoring the ankle. Right. And I and I understand he's the franchise guy. He's the face of the Chargers. I get all that. But if you're dealing with a high ankle sprain, or what the medical people would always say. These things take weeks to heal. It takes so long. So, again, I, I wish I had an answer to that, but I guess, you know, it, it, maybe they're looking at it, guys, like a 50% Justin Herbert's better than a 100% Taylor Heineke or Easton Stick, which well, brings up another problem yeah, about I was the just, backup quarterback. Right. I was just going to say that Taylor Heineke been, was there five weeks why would you? Why would you put? I mean, I I would I would have went with Easton Stick. He he, he took all the number one droid, Billy. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, I just didn't understand that at all. Yeah, all right, Billy, you're up for a question. We got a comment here. Uh oh. Uh, we got Ralph Williams. Hello, guys. Sad loss. Don't know okay. what that means, but we'll agree with him. <laughs> um, no, I wanted to make a point too about you know we talked about Achilles, and um, you know you look at Aaron Rodgers last year. He injured his Achilles on turf. 
how many times have you seen knee injuries on turf, Achilles injuries on turf? And, you know, Ed and I both do a soccer show. We're big soccer fans. When you look at the Premier League, when you look at the Bundesliga, none of them play on turf. And guess what? Very little inj- very little knee injuries, very little uh, Achilles injuries. It's because turf or, or it's because natural grass gives. It gives a lot more than turf. Turf doesn't give. And I just think um, I really believe that that all fields in the NFL should be grass. Period. Point blank. Um, even in the indoors, I mean, you see it in Arizona. They 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 roll it out there. They let it in the sun. They roll it back. Vegas as well. Yeah. Vegas as well. You can do this. I mean, and I think it's gonna it it would cut down a lot of these injuries. I re- firmly believe that. And like I said, just talk to the Premier League in the Bundesliga over there. They'll, they'll Although I I gotta take a little point of contention because I was actually at the Super Bowl last year, and that field in Vegas was quite treacherous. Was it so, really? So yeah. So and I know what they've done in Arizona. They have had some issues there with that uh, concept. Bill was talking about rolling the fields in and out. So, you know, I, I, I agree with you in theory, but I think the problem is like maintenance, like, you know, and I respect the hell out of the Steelers, but that high, that field there in Pittsburgh, my gosh, that looked awful on Sunday Mm. and, or the previous Sunday. Um, and, and you know, what doesn't help either is like, when Pitt is playing on a Saturday night, yeah, and then the I'm Steelers play that. a one o'clock game the next day, I'm like, right, you Which know, is what happened, essentially. right? Yeah. Yeah. So that that is a really tricky issue. So, and also, would that surface, like you talk about with the soccer, would that preserve in the fall and the winter? I, I don't know. That would be something like a groundskeeping yeah. question. Well, hey, they do it in, in up here in Lambo. I mean, you know, they don't have an issue up in Lambo. I mean, that's true. But, um, yeah, maybe they ought to model their fields after them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so speaking of the uh, international games with those fields, the, the stadium they're going to play in is Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. They right. built their stadium specifically for the NFL. They have a turf field and they roll in and out their grass field for their soccer games. So they just roll out their pitch and then there's a turf field underneath specifically for NFL games. So it's not the greatest turf that they built, but that's what they do at Tottenham Hotspur, that new stadium, which I thought was wild. You know, yeah, to right. Guarantee themselves a, a game, but Billy had a question about international. Go ahead, Billy. Yeah, no, you know we've been hearing about this for a long time. Like, how long have we been doing the London games? What, what we're going on? What twelve years? I think now, no. something like that. I was actually at the 2013. I was in Wembley with uh, Steelers and, and Vikings. So oh, okay. But my question, Zig. Um, you know, they've been talking for a while about an international team. Um, you know, the prospect of that happening, you right. know, we've heard London, we've heard, you know, um, my theory is, you know, logistically there's going to, there would be some issues obvious, obviously with it. Um, but they were saying about, you know, a, a, a all international division would probably that way, you know, they could play each other. They could, they could, the travel schedule, they could c- kind of tailor it. So you're not doing as much travel if you actually had a division. I don't know. Do you, do you ever see that happen? And do you ever see us, you know, literally having maybe a team in London, maybe a team in Frankfurt, maybe even, you know, I mean, the World Football League had what the the Barcelona, Barcelona Dragons, Dragons yeah. Berlin, yeah, yeah. Um, Ryan Fire, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Could Colors. you ever see that happening? And and do you kind of you kind of agree with me that the better way to do it would be having like an actual like division? It could happen. You know, obviously, if you wanted to implement those those uh, particular teams that you were talking about. And and I would also think, too, like even if you just did London for the time being, my guess would be you'd probably have to have um, them play. I don't know, like have like, the East. Well, you, right. But I'm right. But I'm where my where I was going to go with this is you might have to have them from a travel standpoint have them play, like, if it was the AFC East, have them play at Buffalo, at New England, at the Jets, all in concurrent weeks. And then if you were to have a team go over there to play, then would you have to have, you know, the teams come in and and play concurrent, you know, weeks there, depending if you got more teams is what I'm trying to say. So from from a travel standpoint, that would be really kind of tricky. Uh, to probably hold costs down at the same time, 
uh, the travel. And you'd have to wonder, too, would they have to increase the season and have, you know, extra bye week or something yeah. like that? So go ahead, John. You're up. Oh, yeah. My, my one last thing is really is about divisions. I don't think we got that, man. Well, who's the best division in for me? I, NFC North. Has three great coaches in it, I think. Three great, yeah. three good, two great coaches, one good one. The other one, not so much. Who's the best division in the. Yeah, yeah and I want, I'm wondering who the one is that you got. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, some guy named Eberflus. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, but uh, yeah, I love Campbell too. He He's terrific. He felt bad, by the way, for not giving no golf. Game ball. Game. I know he felt. Yeah. I thought when he was whispering, I thought he was going to ask him, you know, if you want those fifty cent wings from Applebee. <laughs> yeah. Cover your mouth. Way, those commercials are hysterical. Oh, I love them. Yeah. Cover your mouth. They can steal Cover your, your order. Steal your order. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I like Lafleur a lot. I like um, uh, the guy from O'Connell a lot from, from yeah. Minnesota too. So, uh, best division right now. I don't know how you can't say the NFC North. A lot of people thought it was going to be the AFC North before the right. start of the season, but you know Minnesota's unbeaten. I think Green Bay is going to get things turned around. I think yeah. Detroit will get their act together. They've been kind of middling a little bit, and you're a Chicago team, Jr. They're they're competitive now. You know they yeah. they could be nine and eight, ten and seven. Okay. You could conceivably have. Like last year, all the teams in the AFC North above 500. I could see that for the yeah. NFC North. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. So, what do you mean? I mean, the NFL is obviously it's a copycat league. What trends are you seeing on either the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side of the ball? Because to me, it seems like now everybody's morphed into this, uh, you know, pass heavy defense, right? Where they have all these fast, quick guys on there. And now it seems they're like, screw it. We're just going to run because, you know, we outweigh you by, you know, 40 pounds a man on the line. What do you, what do you make of all this? Yeah, I know there's a there's been a lot of uh you know the what was it Mel Kiper Jr. said they ought to get rid of the cover too and all oh, that that there's and I love Mel, I love the hair, but I don't think that's I, I don't think that's ever gonna happen. Um I was trying to think of something um right off the top of my you, you, the point you brought up, Quinn, was was a was a good one too. Um I think you obviously you'll see more teams uh maybe more than ever now try to you know, implement, Hey, we're going to rush, you know, six or seven more repeatedly. You only have five guys to block. Maybe do we see more blitzing and all that and that kind of thing. So I think that's a, a, another trend you could look for. So, uh, that, and probably, you know, seen, I I've seen, seems like I've seen a few more, um, sort of end arounds, jet sweeps yeah. and type of game. So maybe teams, you know, utilize that a little more. I know, uh, Cordell Patterson there in Pittsburgh, uh, mm -hmm. he was like almost a Swiss Army knife watching him play the other day, although he got yeah. hurt. So that yeah. was mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I'll cool. tell you, well, they're kicking a lot of field goals. I mean, there's been more yeah. field goals than than we've seen in, in recent years. Well, Ed, your uh your team won on field goals alone. I mean, I mean goals. Yeah. you look at with a uh, new kicker, I know. Austin Seaver yeah. there. Only there a week. Or no, yeah. three days. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I practice. mean, yeah. you look at the Steelers. I mean, the first, you know, against Atlanta and, and Denver, the first two games, I mean, it was all special teams and defense. That's all they won. I mean, it was, you know. So, but, yeah, I had another question for you. So, back in the day, they had the World Football League. They had all that stuff. Right. And each NFL team was mandated to send players over for sort of like a, you know, developmental thing. Development. Kurt, Kurt Warner was there. Yep. You know, a couple of players. One of the Hasselbacks was there. And it goes on and on. Why is the NFL not uh, – using the UFL as sort of a minor league. I mean, they're, they're all setting players from it, but why not do the same thing? These guys need repetitions. That's why, the, in my opinion, when you get these players in, offensive linemen, quarterbacks, they, they don't have enough reps, you know, because they, you know, they're coming out early from college. Maybe it's going to change with the NIL, but why are they not going to pair with the UFL? Any idea? I wish I had an answer for you because I think that would be, you know, would behoove them to do right. a, my, you know, almost like a developmental league. To me, yeah, that right. would be, you know, because like you mentioned about with the, the linemen coming out, uh, they're, they're all conditioned to basically, you know, just do the RPO type thing. You've got quarterbacks coming out of college. They haven't been under center. So this is where I think a developmental league would do them wonders. It would almost work, if you will, like a, almost like a training school, so to speak, before they would get to their first training camps in the NFL. So 
I, I'm with you there. I would like to see this almost be sort of a developmental league where you can coach, if you will, the fundamentals that they haven't gotten in high school or, mm -hmm. or college or even back to high school. So I'm with right. you. Those seven on sevens. Yeah, and, and also, it would go to your point, it'd finally get to that year-round sport, you know, because you'd go right into it. You know, go, hey, because I remember watching and I, I looked at the back of the helmet. I go, oh, there's somebody who played for the Redskins. You know, I remember watching the right. different helmets, you know. Go ahead, Billy. Well, not only that is some of these role changes that they want to implement. Why not do it in the, Why not do it yeah. in that league? Why not do it in a developmental league and see if it'll work before you, you know, I mean, you look at this dynamic kickoff. That's yeah, that's where they got I mean, it. they they just were like, hey, we're doing it. We don't care how it is. We're, we're doing it. You know, it's it's, you know. It's happening. We're not, you know. And this was not even what a year or two after everyone's buzzing that maybe they were going to eliminate the kickoff. Right, now right, we're keeping right, it in, right. so it's like let's find a happy medium, you know. Any yeah. chance they're going to move to the 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 quicker replay with the eye in the sky? Any chance that happens? They're still I taking would, forever. I would I would love to see that. I mean, they utilize it in hockey. They utilize it in other sports. There's no reason, unless you want to sell commercials, why we need to have like these long delays. If the call is there, make it move on, speed up the game. So on our other football show, Bill and I and our, our a couple other buddies, I've asserted that we're not too far away from a pay-per-view Super Bowl. Do you Ooh. think it's going to go to that? I mean, you charge 50 bucks, it's billions of dollars, right? Any chance they're going to that? Ooh, then, well, <laughs> well, then, then you wonder if you, you know, guys our age or even older is like, hell, I've, Watch the Super Bowl for free, <laughs> even though technically it's not because you pay a cable bill or right. satellite yeah. bill, whatever the case is, but it's on over-the-air TV right. where, you know, you can get it on a Fox or CBS, NBC, ABC. So, uh, gosh, I hope not because then that would really make you wonder then has the NFL really kind of jumped the shark? Because as it is, people are pissing and moaning about yeah. games being on you know, uh, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Amazon yeah, yeah. Prime. There's you know, a, yeah, that, that's why I asked. I figured yeah. that because they're having their ROE, their return on ROI. It's unbelievable. Oh, I bet they're thinking of it. There's no yeah. doubt, you know, yeah. but I think you'd really piss people off doing that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. John, you got another one in you? Yeah, I got to ask this because I had people when they found out Zig was going to be on, they, they want to know up here in Western New York, do the Bills finally, is this the year? Is the AFC weak enough that the Bills can go to the Super Bowl? Oh, uh, you know, let, let's let's for, first of all, for them, let's get over the loss to the Ravens first. And because uh, they got a tough stretch of games, they got the yeah. got digs coming up here with the Houston and they got some other tough games coming on. So uh, I still think they'll be in the playoff mix. There's no doubt about it. But still, as long as 15's there in Kansas City and you're able to get, until you get over that hump, that's going to be awfully tough. And I still think. You know, you've got some other teams that are going to make some noise out there. I'll still be curious who comes out of the north because, you know, Pittsburgh's good right now. But I, I still think Cincinnati at some point gets their act together after the slow start. Uh, Houston, I think, is very, very good. So Buffalo will be a factor. But again, until you slay that dragon in Kansas right. City, that's going to be very tough. Do, do you think the Pittsburgh Steelers can keep this recipe going? Honestly? That's a good question. Uh, you know, let's face it. The, as long as number 90's there on defense, they always are going to have a really good chance there because Pittsburgh's always solid there. Um, but with but with them, I, I still think uh, what you've got to hope for with Fields is he continues to progress and progress and not regress. So uh, be curious to see how that handle is handled. Uh, I know they're banged up a little bit now in the backfield. And I'd still like to see them get. I'd like to see them get Pickens more involved somehow because he's like their big play guy. Uh, they might need a, some help there. Offensive line to me remains a work in progress. They'll sludge through. This could be a nine or ten win year for Mike Tomlin. So it'll be interesting to see how this all shakes about. One, one more follow up. Here. Does a does a healthy Russell Wilson get traded to Miami? That's just what I was going to ask, right? Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's a definite possibility because the Dolphins definitely need some kind. But then on Pittsburgh, who do you got after him to back him up? You so, got Allen. Oh okay, yeah, right. Oh yeah, him. Kyle Allen. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, now 
I think that, you know, we keep hearing that Russell's real close to being a full participant full participant in practice. Right. Matter of fact, they're saying it might happen this week. Um, I could see him wanting out. You know, I, I, if they decide to still go with Fields when he's healthy, I could see him, you know, saying, hey, I want out of here. Um, I don't know, Miami, I mean – Geez, they should have uh, they should have addressed this whole quarterback uh, situation. Like yeah, they, they should have you know <laughs> should have done this uh, you know back in training camp and you know maybe I, I don't know. There, there's a lot of you know. Everybody made fun of Atlanta, but if Cousins goes down, they got a hell of a backup there. You know. Yeah, Penix. You know yeah. the uh, former uh, or the first round pick out of Washington, and to me, everybody was still hedging their bets there and. You know, let's face it. The fact is, uh, Atlanta probably maybe saw, yeah, Cousins is good for the short term, but we got to make sure, first of all, he's totally healthy. And second of all, this kid is probably so good that if we looked ahead to the next draft or two drafts, we might not get anybody that good with that high a pick again. So everyone, everyone was hot and bothered they didn't take a defensive end. I'm like, this is a hell of a pick on their part. As far as I'm concerned, they were being proactive about the whole thing. And they ended up getting Judon anyway, so. Yeah, and, and Simmons. Yeah. So yeah. they did pretty good. Go ahead, Billy. No, I mean, that's all I, I wanted to, uh, you know, I just, like I said, I, I could see him, uh, I could see Wilson going elsewhere. I could see him wanting to trade, and, you know, and Miami would be, a, you know. Hell of a destination, I think. Yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I think Miami should have done a little bit better job of addressing their quarterback situation. I mean, you know, Tua, I mean, geez, you know this guy has a history of this. You know, I I, I really believe going into this season, I, I said, you know, it's it's only a matter of time before this, uh, you know, rears its ugly head again. And, and sure enough, we're, you know. So, so with the knowledge now that we know that uh, Brett Favre has Parkinson's zig, does that have an effect on, on early retirements? I mean, he's not showing any sort of signs right now, right. but if he gets to the points where he's showing signs in there, it's kind of, kind of you know, it's, it's cringe to watch, you know, all that stuff. Do you think that'll have an effect on the modern-day player? I think it's a, it's a definite possibility because obviously he took, you know, so many, you know, vicious shots to, in his career, you know, to his head and to other areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, you, you could see why guys who, you know, maybe love the game, but realize, hey, I got a full life ahead of me or who got into football because they didn't like it, but because that was the most talented thing uh, that they could do with their themselves. I think they are going to realize, you know what, maybe I get my one big paycheck or whatever the case may be, and then that might be it. So, uh, and also Favre, let's not forget, he also had uh, the issues with the painkillers earlier in his right. career and yep. uh, the alcohol and things like yep. that, but still uh, wishing Probably him nothing but the too. best. Yeah. Well, Go ahead, Billy. well, I like what – well, I didn't like it, but I'm, I I thought it was interesting what he said. You know, he was talking to a doctor, a neurologist, and they, they said about um, – they said, well, how many concussions have you, you know, think you've gotten in your career? And he said, well, I don't know. He said maybe about eight to ten good ones. And he said, well, how many times have you gotten hit and seen stars? He said, oh, geez. He said, probably hundreds of times, if not thousands. He said, well, guess what? That was a concussion. Right. You know, and. Um, now, does I mean, the NIL money change that at all? You know, they come in, they get, because some guys are getting some NIL money. You know, yeah. does that change when they come in the NFL and say, I only need one good contract, you know? It, it could. You know, hell, I think. Uh... Well, if I'm not mistaken, I think Arch Manning got more in NIL, NIL money than Brock Purdy at the Niners. Yeah. yeah. You know, think <laughs> about yeah. that. So, yeah. she's always getting five million a year. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. What's the point? yeah. Well, real quick, I want to ask you, Zig, I want to get your take on it. We, you know, we also, we, on our football show that we do Thursday, we talk, you know, NCAA and everything like that. But we were, we were talking last week about this whole UNLV. Yeah. Um, with this quarterback, you know, Luka, basically, yeah, yeah, and you know, I said, hey, you know, from what I gather, what happened there was you had a third party doing the negotiating, basically, and they they promised him something right. that the university essentially knew nothing about, and was like, well, we, you know, we we don't know anything about this. Like this is the first we're hearing about it. Uh, to me, there has to be some sort of, you know, there's got to be some sort of like 
contract CBA. Like there has to be like a, it, it's going to come down to a CBA. Am I, am I correct at some point in time? I, I mean, I, no, I was just going to say, I, I agree with you because, uh, you know, this is almost like from the situation now where, you know, the NCAA had all the control. Now it's like the players maybe have too much of the control. And, it, you know, yeah. to me, the whole thing kind of smelled fishy anyway. It's like, how come there wasn't a written contract? Well, right. that was my point. Like, right. both parties knew, like, right. hey, this is what I'm expecting. Okay, this is what we're expecting. Well, this would have alleviated that. But, agreed. And yeah. um, just to make the point, I had heard uh, my former uh, Vegas colleague does a terrific job on uh, ESPN Las Vegas and also does work with the UNLV football broadcast, Steve Cofield. He made up the he made the point on, uh, I think it was Mad Dog Radio last week or College Sports Radio, one of the channels, where uh, Barry Odom, who's done a remarkable job with that program, said that we weren't really going to be players in the NIL. So take that for what it for what oh. it's worth. And, and the the university said, hey, this young man made the demands. We were we weren't going to go for that because it violates what they said were pay to play rules and also apparently it violated Nevada law. So they weren't going to risk their fortune wow. here, you know, on, on just this one guy. And by the way, the guy who stepped up for him, Williams, he lit it up against Fresno state. So it's almost like they didn't miss a thing. And now the right, so, that's a little, uh, that's yeah. a little uh, funny coming from the running Rebs who paid all those players in basketball, with yeah. Jerry, you know, Oh, I was out the there. Their, you know, yeah. Yeah. You were. Yeah. Yeah. Augman and LJ and, yeah, Grandma the, Moss. So they the all got picture. paid, didn't they? Well, yeah. Well, what do they say? <laughs> the NIL now stands for now it's legal, you know? Yeah. <laughs> right? Right. Yeah. I love that. Go ahead, John. You got one last one? No, I'm I'm good. I mean, I, I uh I'm just happy Zeke joined us, man. I'm good. I'm glad that we had the uh, the time to talk to you. Thank you for answering the Bill's question. Thanks and time, brother. I'm gonna have to talk to you soon about hockey, but we'll do that somewhere else. Leafs so, Bruins, baby, another year of that. So, so you're final, always, yeah, you always come out on top. So, yeah. <laughs> final question for me is, you know, we're quarter way through. What do we have to look forward to in the next 13 games? Hmm. Good Anything that's going to stand out? Anything's going to shock you? Anything you're looking forward to? Uh, Any game that you would pay to go see? I don't know. There's, I, I'd have to, I'd have to probably think uh, a little more extensively on that, but. Um, just, you know, can, I, I think the thing that, and I'll still stick with this from, from even my preseason predictions, will we have the first three-peat with the Kansas City Chiefs since the 60s yeah. Packers or even 1929-31 to 31 Green Bay Packers yeah. who won three straight NFL championships? To me, that's going to be really the telltale uh, of all of this, and especially now Rice looks like he's going to be out a period of time. Uh, they've had more injuries pile up. They've questioned Travis Kelsey, and then he comes up with a big game. So to me, I'm going to be curious if they could actually sort of have this the three-peat in Kansas City more than anything. So Who I'm looking forward to that. Pick? I, did, I, I picked Kansas City to win it all again. So, <laughs> so that's, we'll that's see. All I got. Bill, you got anything else? No, I think I'm good. No, I think that's about it. I mean – I don't know. I'm satisfied that Zig thinks that my Steelers are going to be nine or ten wins. I think I'm. That's where I'm at too. So I'm just wait till they play Washington. They just can't hang with Washington. They're the undefeated beaters. That those those plucky guys, whatever they want to call themselves these days. That 11 and 0 season when they played what on a Tuesday, and I was just like, that was oh, I remember lost. that. Yeah, my man was, was like, bleeding oh, out man. of his leg, and Smith just kept going and hit the ball for a little bit. <laughs> they know all the tricks, baby, down there. Zig, we want to thank you. It's been such an honor to talk to you. The voice that I hear in my head, there, there's many, but of course yours is one of them when I listen to the NFL radio at work. Thank you so much for everything you do and, and all your knowledge that you gave us. I'd hope, you know, in the future, maybe you'd come on again, and that'd be awesome. Mighty Quinn, Bill, JR, always good to be with you guys. Thanks for having me on tonight. All right. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. We're going to be back on our Thanks, regular uh, time on Thursday. Have a great time and lights out buttons.